Hello there! This is the second part of a video series that me and Nathan from Duty Quest are making together. If you didn't watch the first part yet, I highly recommend you to do so because this second video starts from where the first part ended. You will really need the knowledge of the first part here, okay? So I'll put the link to the video in the card that is appearing on the screen right now and also in the first comment on the pilot comment. I'll wait a second until you finish watching the first part, okay? Did you finished? Did you know what, what a plugin does? Did you know how to make a configuration file? Okay, so let's get started. Here we are where we finished the first part. So we already have this setup made and finally we can work in our plugin. So in the ready callback, I will go to the editor interface to interface and get the selection which as we saw returns an editor selection that is a class responsible to handle selections in the editor and it has a signal called selection changed so we will connect this signal to our plugin so connect selection changed signal to this plugin at the on selection changed method so let's create this on selection changed method here function on selection changed and whenever the selection changed if we have more than one node selected because this plugin will handle multiple nodes right we'll get the editor interface again we will get the selection again and we'll get the selected nodes which returns a list, an array of the current selected nodes. So we'll see if the size of this array is greater than one. So we have more than two nodes selected, right? If so, we'll set the process input to be true so that we can handle a shortcut, for instance. Otherwise, we'll set to false so we don't handle any anything at all. And just to make sure that this works from the start, from the beginning, I will also add this on the ready callback here. Let's not forget that the get selection is also a method, so add the parentheses here. So we go to the editor interface, get the selection, get the selected nodes, and see if the size of this array is greater than one. Next, let's create an interface. A way the user, in our case it can be ourselves, will be able to enter a name and confirm that this is the name that the nodes shall take from now on. Let's create a new scene here with a control node. So control, I'll set the layout of this node to be the full rectangle and I will add a color rect node and also make it take the full rectangle as well. But this will be dark color with a smaller alpha, so it's transparent, right? We will also add a line edit node, which is a node that allows you to enter a text and to confirm a text. And you see that this offers a text entered signal, which happens whenever the user press enter with this node selected. So it can input some text and press enter and this signal will be emitted. Let's move this to the center of this node. So I will use layout center here and I will add a placeholder text telling you to input new name. I will increase the, the size to fit the, the, the name here. I will use center. So here we have it. Now we can save this scene inside our add-on folder. I will call this renamer, rename scene, save it. And now we can go back to our add-on script. Back to the script in the input callback, we will check if the F12 keyword is being pressed. So we can use the input class and check if is key pressed and pass the key F12 key. If this is true, if we are pre if we press it, this key, we will create an instance of the interface we created, of the, the node tree that we created. 
I will call this just R and we'll load the scene, so this, and create an instance of it. So dot instance and I will go to this scene and get the line edit node and as we saw we have a signal called text entered. So let me open the scene and here in the line edit node we have this text entered signal. So we'll connect this to our plugin. Let's go back to the script, connect the text entered signal to this plugin. I will just skip the line here so we have more space for it. And we'll connect it at the on text entered method. And we will also pass an extra argument that will be a reference to this node we just created. So I will add brackets here, add the R which is this node, right, the, the node that we just created, and pass it as an extra argument. And after that, we can add this node we created, so it will be an instance of this scene, of the rename scene, to our plugin. So we can use the add child and pass this R, the, the node that we just created, the instance of our interface scene. Now let's create this method right here. Funk and I will copy it and paste it right here. And as we can see, it passed a string with the new text. So new text. And we also receive an extra argument, which will be reference to the interface. So let's call this interface here. And now comes the hardest part here. First, we will have to create a list of what's being selected. So get interface get editor interface dot get selection dot get selected nodes just like we did here but we won't check the size and we will sort this using a custom uh, function so nodes dot sort custom and we'll create a function in this plugin so we'll pass the self because the sort custom function the sort custom method receives an object and a method that will be used to sort the array. So we'll create a method that will sort by the node index. So we'll use this to sort this array here. So let's create this function. func sort by index and a custom sort method will receive two objects, so object A and object B, and it will return a boolean which will be used to sort these nodes. The, the logic here is that if the index of A is greater than B dot get index, we will return true. So we will actually return the, the result of this operation. So if A is greater than B, we will return true. If A is smaller than B, we will return false. This is so that we can rename the, the nodes based on the order of the hierarchy. After that, for each node in the nodes array, we will set the name to be the new text name. And then we will uh, free the interface. So we'll go to the interface and queue it free. And finally, we can test our plugin. So let's go to the project, project settings. In the plugins tab, we'll activate this add-on. And let's create a test scene here. So I'll add a node and I will add some other nodes as its children. Duplicate this. I will select every node here. Press F12. And I will name them just uh, test. As you can see, it doesn't update immediately. But if we switch the tab and switch back, we'll have the nodes renamed. But as you can see, we have the inverted order. So let's go back to the script here and invert this logic here so if the get index is smaller than the get index of the b object we will return true so save it project settings deactivate activate again and i will select this again press f12 rename this to node press enter switch the scene switch back and here we have it and this is it. 
As I said in the first part, Nathan will make a more elaborated and complex plugin, but for this video, that's all. Thank you so much for watching, keep developing, and until the next time.